wouldn't it be fun if we could add animation in Doodly? Like having a car drive into a scene. Yeah, sure. Doodly is a program that reveals, not an animation program. This tutorial will demonstrate a simple way to create motion in Doodly. Like making Philip's alarm clock more annoying. He's not happy about it. Or like making an imported character walk across the screen. This tutorial will probably be one of the most boring ones you'll ever see, with lots and lots of repetition. Stick with me here and see if you can make a man fly. Let's start with a moving car. Before going into Doodly, we're going to round up the assets we'll need. I'll show you how to make your own in PowerPoint for Windows and Pages for Mac OS users. Start with PowerPoint, although this will also work in Word. My program may look a little different than one in Windows, but the functions are the same. There's no need to set any kind of parameters for backgrounds or transitions. From the Shapes menu, choose a square or rectangle. Size it for a medium-sized rectangle and set it to fill with white and with no outline. Then right-click on the rectangle. From the pop-out menu, click on Save as Picture. Assign a file name and place you'll remember. I name mine with a prefix I'll be able to find easily in Doodly later. Notice that the default is a PNG file, which is what we want for Doodly. For Mac users, go to Pages. Draw a rectangle with white fill and no outline. Right-click and choose Copy, or just Command-C. Then, scoot over to the Preview program. From the File menu, choose New from Clipboard or simply click Command N, then File Save or Command S and choose a name and place you'll remember. You'll see that it also defaults to a PNG file. Now off to pixabay.com for our cool graphic. Here's the Mustang. Download, give it a name and place and we're on our way to Doodly. To save time, I'm just going to start with a scene where all the assets are already in place. You can see in the Props section where I imported the Mustang and the white rectangle. Next, I'll size and line up the two Amandas for the transition effect from arms folded to gesturing to her car. These are the settings used for all the assets on the canvas. Amanda 1, an arbitrary delay, duration 1.5, the guess what text, no delay, small duration, and same for I just bought. Amanda 2 will appear instantly, no delay, no duration. Then the text phrase finishes. I separated the first two text phrases in case I wanted to change colors later. I'm taking a moment to resize the canvas to a smaller size. You'll see why in a minute. Okay, here it comes big secret to animating in Doodly. The masking shape. That's what the imported rectangle will be for in this scene. For this application, I'll rotate and size it to completely cover Amanda 1 and set its specs to 0, 0. Then it's moved in the layers list to right before Amanda 2. You might be able to understand that the mask will cover Amanda 1, then Amanda 2 will immediately reveal. That's why the rectangle has no delay and no duration, because I want the effect of Amanda gesturing to be as fast as possible, so it looks like it happens as she says, A NEW CAR! Now I'll use another rectangle mask sized for the Mustang. It should be set to 0 0.01 delay and no draw duration. Position it so the car peeks out from the mask for now. Selecting both the car and mask, move them to the edge of the canvas with just a little bit of the car showing. Now you see why it's important to have a reduced canvas size. I'm going to select just the mask and using the left arrow key, move it to the left until it covers the car completely. Since the mask delay is set so small, we can figure that the car will appear, then disappear, 0.1 seconds later. Select both the car and its mask and copy-paste them. 
Control C or Command C, then Control V or Command V. While the duplicates are still selected, use your left arrow key to move both images seven keystrokes to the left. Now you will repeat the last two steps for both images. Copy paste, then move the pasted images left seven arrow hits. I believe you can now figure what will happen. The first car will appear, then be masked. The second car will appear as moved to the left, giving the appearance the car is moving forward. It too will disappear. Repeating the copy, paste, move procedure many times will give the final effect of car movement. An important suggestion is to wait until you see the pasted successfully message, because if you move anything before that, it might not apply in full. The best advice for doing these animation effects in Doodly is to save often. We'll end up with so many assets and settings that Doodly sometimes gets overloaded, slows, or crashes. Check out your preview early to see if your timings are right. See that here, I'm controlling the preview playback movement with the playhead marker. I want you to notice that in between the two text phrases, Amanda changes the position of her arms. The text finishes and the car starts to come in. I'll save you all the tedium of the copy, paste, move sequences. Because I ended up happy with everything, I'll just show you the finished version, but with the rainbow option. Were you wondering about the rear end bump? With what you know about masking and moving, can you figure out how it's done? Here is a picture hint. I've changed the masks to 50% opaque so you can see each car image's rotated position. I made sure the front tire lined up with each change so it seemed like the front end stayed in place as the back end moved. Simple, isn't it? The first try on the car move-in was done with a five arrow advance each time. Here's a comparison of the two. The only way the car could come in faster is if it is moved ahead more after each copy paste. But sometimes that looks more jittery. You can always speed up an animated doodly in a video editor. Here's another twist on the same story. I'm sure you have it figured out by now. Let's start with the same car. I will determine the ending size and position first. The asset settings in this doodly are very important. I'm starting with a nice round number of 1100 as a size to make it easier on myself later. Notice that when I change the width setting, the height changes with it automatically because assets proportionately change size in doodly. Place a large mask on top of the Mustang to completely cover it. Make sure to place it clear of any assets already on the canvas. The delay is set for a tenth of a second and no duration. Go back and select only the car by a double click to bring up its asset menu. I'm changing the ending car size of 1100 to the beginning car size of 300. Now select both the car and the large mask. Copy both. Then do a ton of pasting. Remember to wait until you get the all clear pasted successfully before pasting again. Save often. Now you'll have to go back to each succeeding car to increase the size of each. Here's my beginning car at 300. To make it easy, I made a guess that I would increase the size by 25 each time until I got to my desired finished car size of 1100. Save often and paste as many cars and masks as necessary. 
I'll just check a preview to see if I'm satisfied with the result. If there are any glitches, you can move the playhead back and forth to pin down where the error might be. I want to note here that you should not get frustrated if you try this kind of animation yourself. It took hours for each one of these finished animated videos, adjusting timing and positions. I hope this is helpful for you as a starting point on your own projects. Remember that I said that Doodly slows or stalls with so many assets and quick changes? Consider doing one animation scene, exporting it, converting it to a GIF in PowerPoint, Keynote, or a free online converter, and using the GIF in a full Doodly to avoid the increased preview and rendering times. I think you're smart enough to figure out how Philip's alarm clock moved. I'll show you the completed Doodly with the timings and the masking at 50% opacity so you can see placement and rotation of each. The assets are here from the start with the first alarm clock image. I've added a mask to cover it right after the text, set to two tenths of a second delay. You can choose faster or slower for your animations. Each time I copied and pasted the clock and mask, I changed the position of the clock either up or rotated. You can see again what a lot of repetition and work this kind of animation entails. A wrinkle appears in the Philip waking up scene. How did he move from reclining to sitting? Of course those two assets are there in Doodly, but wouldn't a mask covering a reclining Philip also cover other things? Here's where trial and error adjustments and addition will be needed if you take on the animation challenge. Here is the last mask in the scene. This one doesn't cover the clock, but instead covers reclining Philip, the bed and part of the nightstand. So after the mask appears, I'll just repeat another bed, a new pillow, and the nightstand instantly appearing at the same time as the mask. They'll all have zero and zero for settings, so it'll look like they've always been there, even though they were covered by the white mask previously. Adding in a sitting Philip at zero, zero, and text being drawn completes the scene. Do I have to add another wrinkle to Philip's bed? Yep, let's do that. What we've done so far has been only on a whiteboard background, but what about if Philip has a yellow bedroom? If we use our created white rectangle masks, it won't work. But remember, it is easy to create and import a shape with any color you choose and use it as a background and the masks. Then your masks will match the background and won't be seen. I can't figure out a way for this to work on the chalkboard background, but maybe someone else will and add the process to doodly tricks and tips. Making a colored background like gray and reducing the opacity in Doodly can give you an effect like here, where it looks like Amanda's friends are removed from her thought process, the mask faded in, making them seem to recede. For the walk scene, I first googled the term walk sequence and found a bunch of SVG and PNG art. Most of that comes on a single page, so here PowerPoint was my friend to separate the images into individual poses. Please notice that instead of right-clicking each pose and using the Save as Picture feature discussed earlier, I instead exported the whole set of slides as PNG. PowerPoint saved each slide in a separate folder as numbered individual files of each pose. This made it easy to bring into Doodly and keep the sequence. Doing it this way also eliminated the need for a mask in Doodly, as the exported PNGs took with them the white PowerPoint background. Here they are as imported props in Doodly. The white rectangle made it easy to be sure they were the same size on the canvas and kept the positions they had from the original Google download. Simply delaying each additional pose 0.3 seconds masked the one before it. 
I'm willing to bet that clever doodlers will find intriguing uses for this simple animation technique, and will even improve on it. Let's hope we can see their shares. Thanks for watching.